Hi, this is Angel, the bartender. You know me. <laughs> Pastor Jay has asked me to invite you all to join us to get real here at the Ecclesia Cafe Piano Bar. And uh, here's Pastor Jay. Hello, welcome to Get Real 2000. We're here in the lounge. Our teaching here, number 37. And it's kind of a continuation from the one we were doing last time <clears throat> about the uh, parable of the sower. And the title is Good Soil and Dirty Tricks. <laughs> Good Soil and Dirty Tricks. Continuing on from last time <clears throat> with a further explanation of the parable of the sower. We go to New Living Translation, Matthew 13, verse 18. It says, Now here is the explanation of the story I told about the farmer sowing grain. This is Jesus <clears throat> saying this, 19. The seed that fell on the hard path represents those who hear the good news about the kingdom and don't understand it. <laughs> Then the evil one comes and snatches the seed away from their hearts. 20. The rocky soil represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy. 21. But like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go down very deep. At first they get along fine, but then wilt as soon as they have problems or are persecuted because they believe the word, 22. The thorny ground represents those who hear and accept the good news. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the cares of this life and the lure of wealth. So, no crop is produced. 23. The good soul represents the hearts of those who truly accept God's message and produce a huge harvest, 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Okay, A, if you have understood what we read last time, and again now, the explanation, you understand, then you were not seed dropped on hard ground. Good news, huh? <laughs> you weren't the hard seed. Your heart was willing and ready to accept the truth, and the devil was unable to rip you off. B. You may have been greatly encouraged with what we have learned so far from the parable of the sower. You might have prayed, and God has shown you that your life has already been beautifully changed. But friends, a lifestyle, and desires are very strong. Disappointment or discouragement can be like poison. Your friends make fun of your new direction with God. Oh, here comes a Christian. And the new roots of seed that were planted that you were so happy about are torn up by these things. Because they were planted in shallow, rocky soil. They didn't have a good root, a good solid foundation. There was no real depth in your life for them to take root. Your enthusiasm for your new life begins to fade. And soon you just drop out. So there might be somebody that just said, well, I'm going to look into this. I don't know. See what these Christians are all about. <clears throat> Maybe you see somebody that's kind of attractive that's going to church somewhere. And uh, they say, why don't you come to church with me? And you say, oh, okay. And you go. And uh, and you say, oh, yes, boy, that feels good. Yeah, I think I like that. But your motives are all wrong. The, your, your foundation is wrong. Those roots are not getting planted well. And uh, as soon as discouragement and all this stuff comes along, you're ripped off. And you say, uh, oh, well, if it works for you, good. <clears throat> I hate that. See, but it appears to me that it is the... Thistles, <laughs> those birds, the thistles that are the biggest danger to salvation and overcoming in these last days. This metaphor points out that the longing for power 
comfort, position, and money choke out God's word. We begin to worry more about the cares of this life and care less and less for God. Politics in the global world become of higher priority. We welcome religious wars in the name of God, forgetting that greed and power is what brought Satan down <laughs> out of heaven. He was God's most beautiful archangel. It seems sometimes that we are almost going full circle. D. Now, there is one more example in the parable of the sower where seeds are planted in good soil. NIV, John 15, 3. It says, You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. 4. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me, Jesus says. So Jesus is saying, he is the vine and we are the branches. In him, we can ask whatever, and it will be given to us. It is to the glory of his Father that we bear much fruit. We're these branches, and we got to bear lots of fruit. But we can't do that unless we're we're well into the vine. Showing ourselves to be planted in him as his disciple, we're showing that we are planted in good soil. The operations of dirty tricks, here we go, good soil and dirty tricks, are many, even in the church.
There are businesses, corporations, political groups, and government agencies that spend a great deal of money to hire lobbyists and attorneys. You've heard that. They set up large committees and organizations whose prime goal is to find subtle ways to eventually destroy the public image and success of a competitor. It's big business to be able to destroy someone. To win at any cost. This is no new practice. <clears throat> it was going on maybe in different ways, but in the time of Jesus. Business was less complicated in those days, but there were those who were jealous and vindictive, enemies ready to get revenge. Business was mainly farming even if it was just for personal needs. So most likely, in one way or another, every family was involved in farming. It was common for enemies of a certain farmer to sneak in and plant weeds and other poisonous seeds in the fields of those they wanted to hurt. It would sneak in at night or sometime. Some weeds take years to get rid of. This common practice, being on the minds of people in the time of Jesus, was probably a reason that he chose this situation to point out a truth about the kingdom of heaven in his next parable of the weeds. Now we have the parable of the weeds, not the sower, but the weeds. <clears throat> New Living Translation, Matthew 13, verse 24. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seeds in his field, 25. But that night, as everyone slept, his enemy came and planted seeds among the wheat, 26. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew, 27. The farmer's servant came and told him, Dear sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds, 28. An enemy has done it, the farmer exclaimed. Shall we put pull out the weeds, they asked, 29. He replied, no, you'll hurt the wheat if you pull out the weeds, 30. Let both of them grow until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds and burn them and to put the wheat in the barn. Jesus is describing a certain grain here too. It looks like wheat while it is growing, these poisonous seeds. But when it is fully grown and ripe, it has ears that are long and grains being black and poisonous. Today in our time it's clear that symbolic poisonous weeds tick, tick, are growing all around us, <laughs> everywhere you look, symbolically. We live in a field of godless temptation every day. And as we travel through the problems of this troubled world, we must always keep face to face with our hope not getting tangled in the increasing number of weeds we encounter. We see Christians, churches, and doctrines being choked out by the weeds that satisfy the cynic. Mm, that's good. Pride, greed, power, alcohol, drugs, fly-by-night riches that the churches could get, teachings that contradict truth as the Bible teaches and well-translated words of God. They've got to be translated well. Go to the Greek and the Hebrew and find out what the original words were. Putting hope in soothsayers, wizards, fortune tellers, and the stars. A lot of people still do that. And the individual man as a supreme being rather than the kingdom of heaven. We start to lift up these people that we admire. We start to look at them rather than God for our advice and, and our hope. Even the very elect could be deceived if it were possible. NIV Matthew 24, 24 
It says, <clears throat> for false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. It is not possible for us who believe and are focused on God to be deceived. Those who practice love for all. Love is the main thing. Without love you have nothing, Paul writes. We must be people who don't look at the faults in people. Just look away, but look at the potential in them. What is the potential? Can they become Christians? Well then, encourage them. Can they become something good in their work, find a new job, find somebody to love? Encourage them. See what their potential is. Even those who are caught up in, in the trap of this world and turn from God, if they're still alive, there's hope. Go after them. We need to be a beacon of light. Not to drag, but to guide foreign or friendly ships alike into a safe harbor. I like that. Not to drag, but to guide foreign or friendly ships into a safe harbor. When we know and live the whole truth that Jesus teaches, we do become that beacon. Now, a further explanation of this parable of the weeds. New Living Translation, here we are, Matthew 13, 36. And then leaving the crowds outside, Jesus went into the house. His disciples said, please explain the story of the weeds in the field. <laughs> there are any problems. 37, all right, he said, I, the son of man, and the farmer who plants the good seed. 38, the field is the world, and the good seed represents the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil. The harvester is the end of the world. And the harvesters are the angels. The angels are going to be working for the Lord. We're not angels. We're his children. Don't get that confused because of some television shows. 44. Just as the weeds are separated out of, out and burned, so it will be at the end of the world. 41. I, the Son of Man, will send my angels, and they will remove from my kingdom everything that causes sin, and all who do evil. See, in this end time. 42. And they will throw them into the furnace and burn them. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 43. Then the godly will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. Remember, that's what, what the teaching was called last time. In verse 39, Matthew is writing that the harvest, spiritually speaking, is the end of the age. This age will end at the second coming of Christ, the second advent, you probably heard. But man and the earth will continue forever. So... It's not going to end. It sounds like it, but it's not. Psalms 104.5 says, He set the earth on its foundations. God set the earth on its foundations in this orb. It can never be moved. Never, never, never. Words don't go into the Bible unless they're meant to be there. <clears throat> so if you want to check that out in the Greek and Hebrew, then check that out. It says in Revelation 11, 15, and we're going to go New International Version for this, Revelation 11, 15. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, which said, The kingdom of the world has come. The kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. So we have all these things, never be moved, a kingdom with the Lord and his Christ will be forever and ever. In order for any kingdom to reign, he must have subjects, right? That's where we come in. 
New, New International Version, Revelation 21, 3, and we're going to end here. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. No more crying there, we're going to see the king. No more crying there, we're going to see the king. No more crying there, we're going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. Hey, that's a promise, and uh, we'll all be there. See you next time. Now I live. Promises and nothing seems worthwhile except to be in your kingdom of love, my Lord.